Hi, and welcome back to Medical Point. This is our fourth lesson, and today we will be covering retroviruses and subviral particles. Today, we will be focusing on the second part of it. Last week, we covered retroviruses and how they have many differences from viruses itself. This week, we will pick up where we left off, which is subviral particles. Subviral particles are smaller viruses, which you can assume by the root sub. Subviral particles are infectious agents just like viruses. Viruses are acellular, which means they are only made of a protein coat or better known as a capsid. This capsid protects their genetic information inside of the virus, which could be either DNA or RNA. And again, because they are acellular, they have no organelles, which is why they can't make their own energy, or better known as ATP, or replicate themselves. That summarizes why they are non-living. And because they cannot replicate without a host, they are infectious agents. But you probably already knew all that about viruses. So what are subviral particles? Now there are two types of subviral particles, viroids and prions. So first we will talk about viroids. Viroids are smaller than viruses because it is only one singular circular strand of RNA. Before, viroids were only infecting plants, but now they are also being found in humans. They are found in humans by the case of hepatitis D. So, how exactly do these things make more of themselves with just one circular strand of RNA? Well, because they are known to be catalytic. An easy way to remember this is by using both of the C's in circular and catalytic. Here's just the Khan Academy plugin because they gave us the tip. But what does catalytic mean? It means that it can make or break covalent bonds. Another C. And because it can make or break bonds, it can self-cleave to make more viroids. Now, if you notice, I actually hesitated while saying the viroids because it's very similar to virions or just the names. The actual thing itself is completely different because virions are full viruses with more than just one singular circular strand of RNA. Virions have DNA covered by its protecting capsid and has a completely different procedure for replication. Although viri viroids and virions are completely the same looking if you look at them as the word, they're totally different. So please don't confuse them because that's probably not gonna help. Moving on to prions, on the other hand, were actually just recently discovered. And the reason why is because scientists always debated on whether or not proteins can be infectious, which brings us to what prions actually stand for, which is protonaceous infectious particles. That took me a while to memorize, and it's definitely a mouthful, but it sums up what a prion actually is. Prions have zero genetic materials and are only made up of protein. Now, there are prion proteins and normal proteins, and they actually look a lot different. But there isn't much research on these prions, which makes us assume things we probably shouldn't. Now, the shape of these prion proteins tend to be in a beta sheet conformation and can change the alpha helix, which is the structure of a normal protein, into a beta sheet. But both proteins are made of the same amino acids, which makes us assume that they are the same proteins, but in different shapes. Now, this isn't good, since if, since if this change were to happen in another body part, like your brain, when the normal brain functions, these proteins may cause huge holes to form in your brain, which definitely does not sound good. Now, no need to panic, because there isn't much research done on these prions, so we can't exactly confirm anything yet. Don't panic. Now that's definitely a lot of information to grasp, which makes you understand why we split them into two different topics. And as always, I hope this lesson was helpful to study for MCAT or just any regular science class you may have. Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and thank you so much for watching.